So today I will speak about modern SQL in 2023. So uh, first I will take a bit about myself. So I work uh, at ClickHouse. Obviously, I am responsible for query planning, uh, query analysis, a lot of low-level optimizations, dictionaries, JIT compilation. And uh, today I want to tell you about our new infrastructure for query analysis and planning. And uh, my talk will have following, uh, will have this plan. So basically we will start with some introduction uh, where I will introduce uh, our problem. Then I will uh, tell you about uh, features uh, of uh, ClickHouse SQL that we have right now. Then uh, I will uh, tell about analyzer and planner component. And after that, uh, I will make some conclusions. Okay, so let's first start this introduction. Uh, in ClickHouse, uh, we have uh, a lot of powerful, powerful SQL features. Uh, but when we combine them together, query analysis becomes extremely complex. In old infrastructure, there was a lot of complex logic around rewriting AST. Uh, we also do not have, uh, in old infrastructure, we did not have uh, natural support uh, for scoping, of natural support for aliases, for lambdas. And uh, there was also additional problem that we actually did not have uh, any ClickHouse uh, SQL specification. So basically we have a lot of features, but they are somewhere in our code and only experts know uh, how it works. Okay, uh, so, uh, and uh, there, is, uh, there was problems related to analysis and uh, now problems related to planning in all infrastructure. So basically we did not have any separation between our analysis and planning it was a big issue. Uh, it uh, does not allow us to scale development. And also support for joints was not ideal. Some features uh, were not supported because we did not have enough information uh, and enough semantic information to understand what's going on. For example, uh, such important features like indexes, like Prevair, they were not ideal joints. Okay, and solution, uh, uh, we decided to redesign and uh, implement query analysis and planning in ClickHouse. So how hard it uh, will be. Let's first uh, start with a ClickHouse SQL. So you will understand what features do we have and how complex they can be. Let's start uh, uh, with definition. So basically ClickHouse SQL, it's not some random SQL. It's, uh, it does not break standard SQL. It's just extension of uh, standard SQL. We support almost all standard uh, SQL features. So we support joins, we support uh, common table expressions, we support scalar in non-scalar subqueries. Uh, also, we support a lot of ClickHouse specific functions for aggregation uh, and, uh, some, and a lot of uh, useful ordinary functions. And uh, in ClickHouse extensions, there are the main important features. So we have aliases, it's the most important one. Also, we have uh, great support for arrays. So we have array join, we have special array join function, we have uh, lambdas, and uh, also we have composite types and compound expressions. Uh, and uh, additionally, we have uh, some, uh, some non-standard support for matchers and for column transformers. Okay, so uh, let's start with the thing that uh, uh, if you write some query in SQL, you obviously had such problem. So standard SQL does not allow you to reuse aliases in query. Uh, in our extension, aliases uh, can be defined and reused in any part of the query. This can lead to huge query simplification for complex queries with a lot of expressions. Uh, on the slide, you can see that uh, you can first define alias, uh, one as a, then use alias, or you can uh, first use alias, then define alias somewhere in query. Uh, very easy to use. And uh, let's uh, just uh, walk through the problem. Uh, so basically assume that you want to compute some complex expressions, uh, expression one, expression two, and use them in query. So on slide, you can see we use these expressions in projection, in select, and also in, uh, uh, in, in where and in order by. So basically uh, in a lot of places in query. And the only portable solution to reuse them uh, is to, uh, in uh, standard SQL, is to move expressions uh, to subquery. And uh, you can see how this can be done. It's not scalable because if you need to like uh, reuse more expressions or some expressions depend on other expressions, you need to have a lot of nested subqueries and it does not scale well. 
uh, readability in uh, standard SQL can be additionally improved or <laughs> not improved. Uh, it uh, depends on some preferences uh, using uh, common table expressions. So you can extract this sub, uh, this subquery in table expression, then reuse it in it in, in my query. Okay, in ClickHouse everything works like uh, very easy. You just use alias. So basically, for first expression you give it uh, uh, alias A, for the, for second expression, you give it alias uh, B, and uh, then you use it uh, in query. Nothing complex. Everything uh, is uh, readable and easy. Okay, and uh, the important thing is that it's not some special syntax, it's not some, you know, hard-coded thing, or some ad hoc solution, it's uh, actually uh, feature of our language, it's very natural thing uh, in our language and aliases work with any expression. So basically it can be like some constant, some expression, some complex expressions, uh, subqueries, uh, whatever. Uh, everything works in ClickHouse with aliases. Uh, and uh, you can, uh, and there can be like uh, another very simple uh, issue that I ex actually had a couple of days ago. So basically assume you want to reuse expression. So you have a single expression and uh, two functions, like a uh, very simple uh, thing. Uh, and uh, you obviously can have such configuration. Uh, and uh, you want to reuse this expression. In ClickHouse, you have uh, two ways to do this. Basically, as I said before, uh, you, uh, aliases can be defined in any part of the query. So you can write this syntax. So for this expression, you can uh, give it uh, alias and then reuse it alias, uh, re reuse this alias. But uh, there is another interesting thing, and uh, this will show some difference uh, uh, between our SQL and standard SQL. So uh, we can reuse common expressions in this statement. And from my perspective, this is like really readable because you can move uh, all complex expression in this statement, then reuse them, them in query. And uh, when you like deliver this SQL, uh, Obviously on this slide, the SQL is small and everyone will understand it, but when you deliver such huge SQL to some, I don't know, uh, to some person, uh, uh, he can uh, like uh, uh, very easily read it. And uh, the most important thing is uh, that uh, you, you, you saw that uh, I moved uh, some expression to this statement and your question is, uh, in standard SQL, uh, there are common table expression in this statement. Uh, did you break this uh, thing? Did you break compatibility with standard SQL? Uh, as I said before, uh, ClickHouse uh, is extension. So basically we support all standard uh, SQL features and our features are implemented on top of them. So uh, you can see that I use common table expressions and I use aliases and everything works fine as expected. Okay, and expressions can be used in any part of the query. It's like a very weird at first, but it's, it can be very useful. You can use uh, expressions in the li limit. Uh, for example, you can put subquery in there, or you can use it as function parameter, or you can use it like in any place where you can put it. And it can be helpful sometimes. Now let's talk about other very important thing. Uh, it's arrays. Arrays uh, are also first class citizens in ClickHouse. We have natural support for arrays in our language. Uh, and uh, uh, we have like, three most important things. So basically the first most important thing is array join. So uh, the second one is that we uh, have a lot of special functions that can work with arrays. For example, on slides there is function array reduce. Uh, and uh, the third thing is that we have special array join function. Let's uh, see uh, a bit uh, how array join works. So basically in standard SQL, there is a thing called unnest and uh, it uh, did, uh, like the same thing. So uh, the, we try to fetch two numbers and for each number, we like uh, flat this array or we like, we trade for each element of this array. So basically we do uh, like <laughs> array join. And uh, I actually use array join a lot. So this is like uh, things that I, uh, that I run like, uh, maybe each week, uh, basically, uh, if you need to extract some perf metrics from query log, uh, you need to use array join. So basically perf metrics in, uh, uh, so profile events in uh, query log is, uh, are array of this uh, tuple. So basically there is a, a metric name and a metric value, and you can make array join with this array and then filter only your query. And then you can, uh, make some filter for this metric. So on the slide, you can see like 
uh, that I extracted all perf metrics for, for some query. Okay, and uh, another mind blowing feature is uh, lambdas. So basically, lambdas are also a very natural thing in ClickHouse language, and uh, you can see how uh, it can be used on the slide. So basically, it can be argument to high order function. For example, you can uh, put it in some special functions like array map. And uh, here on the slide, we have uh, array one, two, three, and we just uh, put lambda that uh, at uh, like one <laughs> to each element of this array. Or you, a very important thing is that you can, can capture uh, you can capture columns from outside scope. Uh, it's uh, very uh, very interesting because uh, you can see on the slide that uh, we fetch some numbers, we use array map, and uh, in lambda we sum array element of this uh, number from outside scope, and everything works as expected. Okay, and uh, another very interesting thing uh, is compound expressions. So compound expressions are also a native part of ClickHouse language. Uh, we support uh, tuple type, we support JSON type, and on, and on slide you can see like a very simple example. For example, you create table points. In table points, you create like uh, column point, and in this column point, you have uh, two subcolumns, X and uh, Y. And uh, you can uh, you insert some points, uh, and you can see how you page them. So basically, it's very natural. You just write identifier, and that's it. So you do not use some special thing like extract element uh, from uh, point uh, or something like this. Uh, very natural. And uh, other, other very important thing is that functions can return. Uh, composite types uh, in, and uh, it can be very important for functions uh, that work with some uh, for some statistical functions because they uh, can return you about a bunch of uh, coefficients for example uh, there is function simple linear regression that returns you coefficients uh, k and b of the resulting line and you can see how this can be used so very natural also, one very important thing is matchers. So basically, there is asterisk matcher that everyone knows. You write a select asterisk, asterisk, and uh, you fetch all columns from table. But we additionally have a very special thing: it's uh, columns. Columns in columns, you can specify regex, or you can specify uh, some columns manually. You can ask why do you want to specify columns manually in this columns thing? It looks strange. But uh, it will not look strange after you'll see this slide. So basically, uh, we will we also have column transformers. And column transformers is like a very cool feature. We can apply transformations for selected columns or remove some columns from selection. And it uh, looks very natural. And why do you need this uh, thing? For example, you have such a uh, su such scenario. You create a table with a lot of columns and uh, you think, oh, one column is broken. I need to recreate this table and reinsert all the data. So basically, you can do this very easily. You uh, you select uh, all columns from this table and replace single column with some other expression. Okay, uh, so let's. Uh, uh, I introduced uh, ClickHouse SQL, and now and now you can see that it's like very powerful thing. So it's. Uh, uh, it, and uh, I want to say that uh, query analysis for our non-standard uh, SQL is surprisingly very complex. Uh, why is it complex? Because when so many features, uh, flexible features start to work together, there are non-trivial ways how you can combine them. For example, you can see first query on this slide. <laughs> and we also need, to, uh, we, we actually need to support such a query because it's like very natural in our language. Or, for example, you can see that uh, someone uh, extracted point column, uh, give alias to this point column, try to extract some sub column from this alias. Or you can see that uh, uh, we use this uh, point column in subquery. Or you can see that someone tried to apply matcher to this point column. We know it's compound. <laughs> so why don't apply match matcher to it? So try to you know, extract all columns and apply some transformation to them. Or you can do very interesting thing. There is a special function for historical reasons. It's called untuple. Untuple function makes tuple, and uh, it it makes like uh, uh, it, it's like a asterisk matcher for this tuple. And you can give uh, alias to this uh, untuple expression and try to use it. Why not? And uh, support. Uh, this is a problem that was related to analysis, it, and uh, it like it uh, just lead to some. 
weird scenarios. But there is a very important thing from you know performance perspective. It's uh, uh, support of, of some features for joints uh, was not ideal in old architecture. So there are a couple. Uh, there was a couple of problems. First, multiple joints uh, are written into the queries. This was done also like a long time ago. It was really hard to implement joints properly at that time. And after that, we implemented a lot of features, you know, on top of that, uh, on top of this architecture. And uh, this lead to name clashing, missing aliases, and a lot of missing optimizations. Uh, for example, indexes uh, in some cases uh, does not work for joints. So it's a primary key index uh, and uh, it's it, uh, skipping indexes. Provide does not work for joints, final sample, by also does not work for joints in some uh, in some special cases, and uh, and uh, in your architecture, I will just say how it uh, looks on like very high level. Uh, so there is uh, analyzer infrastructure that is responsible for query analysis, and the output of this infrastructure is query tree. I will explain what query tree, uh, what is query tree later. Then there is a planner infrastructure, and planner is responsible for build uh, for building initial query plan from this query tree. So uh, input uh, is query tree, output is query plan. And then we have uh, a lot of optimizations on top of query plan. And input of these optimizations is obviously query plan and the output is query pipeline. And query pipeline, you can actually execute. Okay, now let's dive deeper in analyzer. Okay, so what is this query tree thing? Query tree is a data structure and it contains all the necessary information uh, uh, to execute a query, I mean semantic information. For example, uh, what this alias means, what type this expression have, uh, and uh, other stuff. Uh, it's interface between analyzer and planner. So analyzer output is query tree, and planner input is query tree. Built, uh, 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 we built query tree from IST, and uh, query tree can be uh, converted back to IST without any issues because uh, a lot of uh, code in ClickHouse uh, still depends on ST. Okay, and there are like following nodes and a, it's like very natural. So basically we have identifiers, we have matchers, we have column transformers, we have functions, we have lambdas, constants, we have different table expressions, for example, query, union, join, array join, and uh, we also have uh, columns. And uh, the very important thing, the main like uh, critical difference is that column contains pointer to its source. And it's very important because uh, using this uh, information, you can understand if this column uh, source is lambda or if this column source is table and it uh, becomes very easy to analyze this thing. Okay, and uh, the second most important thing is uh, passes. So basically our infrastructure is uh, uh, built around passes, uh, the classes iQuery tree pass is inspired by LLVM infrastructure, and query analysis is the first and the most important pass. Uh, we should create new passes uh, only if we cannot uh, implement uh, this optimization on top of query plan for some reason. Example of good passes are, for example, some predicate expression optimizations, uh, some aggregate functions optimizations. And uh, introspection of this thing can be done using explain query tree system query. And now I will show you how it works. Uh, but uh, first I will uh, a bit tell about query analysis pass. So basically it's, uh, it's the first pass as I, as I already said, uh, and it's responsible for initial query analysis, uh, uh, query validation. It uh, resolves all identifiers, all matchers. Uh, it resolves all, fu all functions, uh, resolves all subqueries, lambdas, and uh, if necessary, it performs constant, constant folding. And also projection columns are calculated for query node and query is uh, validated. So basically we assume that uh, after this pass, a lot of places in query are like valid. And let's take a look at uh, this explain query tree system query. So you can, uh, by default, uh, explain query tree around all passes, uh, but uh, now we need to like run it without any passes, just to, just to see what uh, this query tree is. So basically uh, we have select ID value from some test table. And we see that in this query tree, we have three identifiers, like ID identifier, value identifier, and test table is also identifier. After we run passes, we see that uh, everything is resolved. So basically we have columns, we have table, uh, we have some projection columns, and, uh, and some columns inside projection. And uh, the also very important thing is that we have source ID. So using this source ID, 
you can understand uh, is this column from table or it's from lambda you can introspect this thing uh, and uh, you can also uh, debug uh, some uh, some some issues you can uh, run dump st so basically you analyze query resolve everything and after that you can dump st why it's important you can dump st and uh, quickly check uh, how query is fast to planner for example how planner sees this query if uh, query tree is uh, too big okay and let's uh, see a bit uh, more complex example for example uh, we select array map in this array map we, array map we have a lambda uh, it's simple lambda it just returns uh, uh, its argument we have array map over uh, over uh, array with uh, single element one and we select this thing from test table and we can see that uh, now in query three there is a lot of uh, stuff so basically there is array map function it's ordinary function we know its result type uh, we also know that inside lambda there is a column this column is uh, the parent of this column is uh, the, the source of this column is actually lambda and uh, for example if there is column x in test table we understand that it's lambda it's not a column x okay and uh, the other very important thing is that passes are actually very easy to write so basically now uh, the architecture allows you for example as external contributor just uh, come and write some pass and uh, it will be like <laughs> with some other passes you can see that there are some some if to count if pass convert to like chain pass count distinct pass uh, and uh, very important pass that was added recently cross to inner join pass that in analyzer works much better than before and uh, you can introspect these passes and uh, for example a couple of days ago i have some bug and uh, and I, I saw that after i run, run all the passes uh, query tree is somehow broken so you know like in git bisect i can just uh, run half of passes and another half of passes and try to find the pass that breaks everything and you can like uh, introspect uh, everything so it can be very helpful with your development okay additionally new query analysis infrastructure brings us a lot of features lambdas compound expressions matchers column transformers are now natural part of the language and uh, i will show you examples right now so basically there is a new concept in clickhouse it called standalone lambda what is standalone lambda it's like uh, it looks a bit strange uh, but uh, now it will be very natural to our language so basically similar how 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 aliases can help you reuse expressions standalone lambda, lambdas can help you, you reuse queries and uh, it looks like this so basically you can create this standalone lambda in this statement uh, you give it name plus one for example and you can use this function and it scales very well and i already saw <laughs> Uh, semi-production examples when there is like 50 such lambdas and everything works as expected <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay uh, additionally lambdas can uh, can do very interesting thing uh, i actually did not expect uh, this <laughs> when i developed analyzer but after this uh, uh, after some initial development i i saw that it's like possible so lambdas can take other lambdas as argument and they can call other lambdas and uh, it can look uh, very strange. Uh, uh, so basically, you can create a lambda that will take another lambda. For example, on this slide, we create lambda. We named it evaluate, and it's, there is inner function argument to this lambda and some argument. And this lambda just calls inner function <laughs> for this argument. Uh, so it does nothing very, nothing special, but uh, it looks like really cool because you can do so so much things with it and uh, it's uh, on top of the slide you you call it with inline lambda but uh, you can uh, extract this lambda to this statement and everything will work as expected now also compound expressions uh, can be aliased and reused as any ordinary expression so remember the example with simple linear regression uh, it returns the coefficients k and b and you can use these coefficients so basically you can extract this simple linear regression or some or any uh, statistical function that returns a bunch of uh, you know some coefficients and reuse them in main query so very easy and natural to use and uh, there is another thing uh, very cool uh, feature uh, matchers and column transformers uh, can can be combined with compound expressions right now so basically it's extremely help, helpful for working with multiple nested layers json type compound expressions so you create this uh, 
this constant compound expression point in this statement and uh, in select you like use this point uh, and uh, everything works so basically you extract all columns from this point and after this you extract all columns from this point and apply to string optimization or to, to string function so looks uh, looks cool okay but it's not everything that we redesigned so basically uh, after we re-implemented query analysis uh, we decided uh, that uh, now we have everything to rewrite our planner. So basically we have uh, all the necessary semantic information. The old infrastructure does not work with query tree, obviously. And maybe let's make another planner. Okay, and uh, our, and uh, I, I will also uh, told, uh, uh, we'll tell other points, other motivation points. So basically our old infrastructure for query analysis and planning was too tight together. That lead to development slowdown and obscure bugs. We also decided, uh, yeah, I already said this. We decided to redesign and re-implement our query planning layer that will work with Query Tree. And our main goal of this rewriting, re rewriting is separation and query analysis and planning. Why it's so cool? For example, assume you want to implement some feature. You can just implement it on query analysis layer, and planner will never know about this feature, and uh, it can scale very well in big teams. And because of uh, separation of query analysis and, and planning, new planner is much easier to understand because it does only one thing, make initial query plan. Okay, uh, let's talk about uh, planning steps a bit. So basically what do, uh, how query is planned in ClickHouse like uh, on one slide. First, uh, we extract all uh, columns, uh, uh, all table expression data. What is table expression data? It's table expression and all columns that, uh, that are related to this table expression in query. Then we prepare sets for special in functions and its variations. Then we build query plan for joint tree part of query. Then we build expression actions chain in, and finalize it. Expression actions chain uh, is chain of expressions that need to be evaluated. And uh, this step allows us uh, to not recompute already evaluated expressions. For example, you evaluate some expression in where statement and you use this expression in projection. You do not want to evaluate it another time. And, uh, after, and we, uh, after that, we built other steps of query plan. For example, sorting, aggregation, window functions. And uh, it's important that all stages are uh, fully documented. So it's like easy for, con for some external contributor to jump into this infrastructure. And, uh, obviously, some, uh, and obviously, after our rewrite, uh, uh, we added a lot of new features, like by default. So basically, uh, what uh, are the most important ones? Um, we now support multiple array joins. We also support multiple joins without rewriting them to subqueries. And I will show later why it's very important. Now, sample by final indexes prevail work for joins, and uh, we improve distributed join support. So let's first look at multiple array joins. Multiple array joins allow you to work with nested arrays hierarchies. So basically, you extract uh, uh, on, on this example, uh, uh, on this slide, there is example how this can be used. Uh, you have a nested array. It's array of arrays. In this uh, array, there are two arrays. Uh, first array is one, two, three, and the second array is four, five. And uh, you uh, make array join uh, of a single uh, zero number with this nested array. And after this, after this, you make another array join with uh, nested array inside this array. And you see, you can see everything works as expected. So you can like uh, now deal with such hierarchies very easy. Uh, another cool thing is that now sample by can be specified for any table expression in join tree. It can be very cool because you know you have a lot of joins and you do not want to read all the data. You can just use a sample by. Uh, also now final is supported uh, for and can be specified for any table expression in join tree. It is also very natural because, for example, uh, for some merge tree engines, you want to select uh, this file. Okay, now what's going on with distributed joins? Uh, without a join rewriting to subqueries, now we can build better plan for distributed joins. Distributed joins with multiple distributed tables and distributed product mode local can be directly processed on charts. This obviously can uh, result in uh, like very big performance improvement. Uh, and uh, now it works. Okay. Let's uh, dive a bit deeper into query planning and uh, talk about low-level stuff. Uh, so on low-level expressions in uh, ClickHouse are represented in DAC that has input, function, constant, alias types of node. DAC is direct acyclic graph. And in some cases, it can look 
like this, uh, like on the slide. So we have R plus B plus C, and it uh, in some cases can look like a tree. And uh, we uh, now use uh, DAC everywhere as our internal data structure. The creation from query tree is simple and fast because query tree has every necessary semantic information. DAC is compact, lightweight, and it's easy to use it for indexes and low level optimizations because constants and uh, prepared sets uh, for in functions uh, are already part of the DAC. And uh, what we did, we implement all index analysis to actions DAC Actions DAC is used for uh, all index analysis. So it's used for primary key, for partition pruning, for skipping indexes, and all interfaces are refactored. And index analysis component has interface uh, where input is predicate expression, uh, uh, some predicate expression, for example, from where uh, uh, key expression, and output is stack of RPN elements. Uh, and uh, key condition is keeping indices, indices uh, work for joints almost without any modifications. So basically we made such refactoring and after such refactoring, uh, now we process indexes on top of query plan. Okay, let's talk a bit about performance improvements. So for big queries or queries with a lot of joints, there is significant performance improvement from 50% to five times. How you can see this such improvement? Such improvement you can see if uh, the query spent a significant amount of time in query analysis or query planning. Uh, also, I will talk a bit about further opportunities. So basically in new infrastructure, now it's possible to uh, implement features that we could not do on top of old infrastructure. For example, joins uh, cost-based uh, reordering, correlated subqueries, and we can also provide better standard SQL support or compatibility with other database, man database management systems. For example, we can add support for unnest, for table sample, for qualify, for recursive common table expressions. Uh, and uh, I want to say thanks to Dmitry Novik, Vladimir Cherkasov, Igor Nikonov, Yak Yakov Elkhovsky, Smita Kolkarni, and Nikolai Kachetov uh, for great work uh, on this uh, impossible <laughs> task. And you can try, try it out using a set a low experimental analyzer. And uh, also now to some conclusion. So basically we separate query analysis and planning. This gives us ability to scale development and, and develop new features much faster. So everyone uh, is welcome for contribution. There is significant performance improvement for huge queries or queries with multiple joins. We significantly improved joint support. We added a lot of new features and we also implemented a lot of uh, optimizations on top of query plan. So now, for example, like remove and use sorting optimization, key condition on top of query plan, prepare on top of query plan, remove and use distinct on top of query plan, they can work much better. And, uh, be, uh, and uh, they will work in uh, much more cases. And we also fixed a ton of bugs related to identify resolution, query planning, and joins rewriting. So do you have any questions? <laughs>